Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. Happy to connect with you again today. This is a Tuesday and it is February 27, 2018. And today I'm going to be focusing on maintaining balance and harmony inside of ourselves, regardless of what is happening outside of us. Uh, when I flow these topics, it's divine. Uh, every day I say, what is it that you'd like me to offer wisdom teachings and blessings on today, divine? And this is what flowed out. So as in many cases with my live streams, I don't necessarily know the answers to these things that I'm asked to speak about. So even just prior to <clears throat> turning on this live stream today, I decided to check guidance and I received some very interesting insights as to this topic. So we will get some good, uh, good foundation on this today and learn how we can maintain harmony and balance even with things happening all around us in crisis so for those that are new just tuning in i hope you stick around if you have a place to go you have something to do and you wish you could but you cannot then please um, make sure that you like and subscribe and then you can always come back to my page and see it later on if you'd have a desire to uh, because all these recordings are kept in place and then also Excuse me, for those that are um, more in the audio type, uh, you can go to my webpage, uh, asoulhealer.com, and from there, if you go to my blog, uh, I usually post all of my videos in blog form, usually uh, a week after I do the video, so it runs about a week late. And so then you can... Uh, join any of the podcasts, you know, Apple, iTunes, uh, Stitcher. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones out there that you can do this on. And so you can actually tune into the podcast versions of this. So for those that are interested, you can listen to it that way. <clears throat> so thank you for all those that are joining today. Love to see some of your comments to say hi right now. Facebook is just showing me who's joined and it's gathering people a little slow today, so it might be hiccuping. So welcome to Angela Diacomo. Welcome, um, Tina. Welcome, Yolanda. Welcome also to CJ. Aloha and welcome to Vanessa. And welcome, Nicoletta. Aloha to Diana Victoria and Kristen Strachan. Welcome. <clears throat> welcome also to M.A. Drade and Susan Birchmore. Aloha to Larissa. Aloha to William. And also aloha to Missy Dad. Welcome to Shelly and Dimple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open a uh, different Facebook page and see actually if there is comments being posted, but it's not showing up on my page, which certainly is possible. Yeah, and so... Um, there is actually comments posting, but I'm not able to see those, interestingly enough, <clears throat> on my page. So Facebook's doing some kind of a hiccup. I'm only able to see who has joined, which is great, but I like to read the comments as well. I'm on my, my computer. So. Welcome, Marissa. Welcome also to William Schramm. Welcome, Missy Dodd. Uh, Shelly Dimple. Welcome, Heather. Welcome to Jim. And so let's go ahead and connect while Facebook is gathering a few more souls. We'll place our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Invite in the beings of light. <clears throat> so dear all layers of the divine, the Tao and the source, we love you, we honor you, we deeply appreciate you and respect you. We ask for your presence at this time. All the beings of light, including beloved Mother Earth, stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, the sun and the moon, all of those serving the planet of the light side, including angels, healing angels, and archangels, masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifu, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas. We love you, honor you, deeply appreciate you, and invite you too to also please join us at this time. We thank you for your unconditional service as well. To the soul, of our individual heavens teams guides angels and saints we love you we honor you appreciate you we thank you for your unconditional service please join at this time 
to the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, downloaded to all souls in all universes. Please turn on. Love you, honor you, appreciate you. Please join us. And as we chant love, peace, and harmony, bless us to clear our own blockages, especially to today's practice, which is maintaining balance and harmony in the face of activity and crisis, chaos all around us. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you. And we invite all souls in all universes to come join and chant with us. So let us chant. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, 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 Li. Lula, I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together, love, peace, and harmony, love, peace, and harmony. <clears throat> how, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So welcome also to Chrissy Cota, welcome Erica, welcome Pat, and Peggy Blake, welcome to Jennifer Cress Smith. Thank you all for coming. I can see your comments. Uh, if I look at, um, I had to open up an entirely other Facebook page. So that's interesting. Welcome Gordon Salnier. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, your posts. Okay. So uh, as I was saying when I first started, um, you know, when I do a flow, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, when I do a, um, a live stream I rarely know what I'm going to be doing in advance sometimes I do if it's a series especially uh, where it's like the ten da you know then you have the ten greatest um, qualities and I know what I'm going to talk about the next day but most of the time just following guidance and today said maintaining balance and harmony uh, inside of ourselves regardless of what's happening around us so how many of you show of hands have difficulty maintaining balance and harmony in your life when things are happening outside of you that keep you in a place of disharmony. Let's see how many people respond. <clears throat> Welcome also to Anjali Flauta. Welcome Sherry. Welcome Lisa Zarniak. Yeah, so I'm getting a decent amount of thumbs up. Maybe many of you are Monks in training, <clears throat> you're doing well. Welcome, Katie Nada. So it is difficult to maintain harmony and balance. Um, probably the biggest culprit is actually <laughs> our mind. <clears throat> but it does boil down to other things. And so one of the things that we want to look at is what can we do for ourselves? Because truly, in the, in the highest understanding, it is nobody's fault outside of us for how we experience things. It doesn't matter if they kick us. It doesn't matter if they yell at us. It doesn't matter if they steal from us. What does matter <clears throat> is how we react and respond to it. Because anything... From that point, the reaction and the response completely dictates our balance and our harmony, right? Sometimes somebody doesn't have to kick, scream, or poke at us. Sometimes we just witness something. We witness something uh, on television, a statement made by somebody uh, uh, that really just rubs our craw the wrong way. Um, 
maybe we just witness something where we don't hear anything, but we see uh, somebody being mean towards a child, and it really upsets our spiritual balance, so to speak. Driving vehicles. How many of you have thrown yourself out of balance and harmony in driving the vehicle, right? I'm still, that's still one of my toughest ones. I don't necessarily get thrown out of balance, but stuff comes out of my mouth that is definitely creating karma. And it's not, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, an expletive. It's more like a judgment. I have a lot of judgments and uh, because I'm not conscious. <clears throat> and that's a lot of what it really boils down to. Because in order to maintain harmony and balance, when I checked with, with uh, Heaven, I said, okay, you want me to talk about this? <laughs> You're going to have to give me some guidance here. And so I did a couple of flows. And one of the things that they said right away was, it starts, it starts with our own honoring of our self. <clears throat> and I thought, wow, that's, that's kind of an interesting starting point. Why would it start with honoring with ourselves? And what Heaven said was, if we do not um, have respect, love, and gratitude towards ourselves, if we put ourselves down or are angry with ourself or have a lack of love towards ourself, then what happens is that sticks with us, not just this week, our whole life. So if you grew up uh, thinking, I'm just a fat, pudgy little boy, uh, I'm just, nobody loves me because I have braces, red hair, and curls, uh, or whatever your monkey mind was saying to you. If you chose to accept that and accept a lack, this is what happened told me, and accept a lack of <clears throat> worthiness, a lack of value, then they said what that creates actually is an internal um, irritation, an imbalance. And they said that what happens is it creates an irritation point. And so when you witness anything outside of you that triggers, and this is just one example, we have lots of them, that triggers these kinds of, of irritation points, then we snap back. Uh, it's no different than if you grew up with a, with a father uh, figure or a, a male in your life that was very aggressive, uh, yelled a lot, okay? So you might be a person that, that curls in and protects yourself. You might be a person that lashes back out. And so whenever you're around a vibratory frequency of somebody yelling or being angry, then it rattles that thing from the past. This is, this is what Heaven was telling me. So they said it act, the, the ability to be uh, balanced and harmonious starts from within and it goes back to our earlier age is not just like handling the moment now when the kids or the husband or, or the dogs are barking or whatever it might be no 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 there are triggers was what they told me that that are the precursors to how we handle things now and we have to address things at that level we have to address things with the way they have shown up in our life for some of us that's not so easy because we're very we're like professionals at shoving this stuff down. We are top ace at making sure that that stuff doesn't come up to the surface. But it does, and it comes up in these intangible ways when we react imbalanced uh, and we instantly move ourselves out of harmony because we have failed to recognize what originated our reaction. And so... We're going to do some practice to help identify uh, some of those origination points, okay? We're gonna work with a couple different emotions. We'll work with anger, and we'll work with fear, and we'll work with anxiety uh, uh, or worry, same. Uh, not exactly the same, but they tend to have a similar energetic about them. And we're going to try to identify some of the earlier reasons for that and how we might have addressed it. Now, I'm just playing with this example. I don't know how well it's going to work, but maybe we'll get some good results with it. And then we'll apply the soul wisdom to help release some of those blockages. So welcome, Joanne Tremaine. Welcome, Isabel. Welcome, Judy Parker. Welcome, Michael Ming. 
Uh, welcome also to um, anybody else whose name I may have missed. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to do a flow now. I'm going to ask Kevin for some additional information because I got there's more that they shared with me. But that's what I can remember off the top of my head. So I'm going to ask Kevin to assist us with some additional guidance on this. Okay. So dear Heaven, can you please assist with wisdom and information that can assist all those that are watching today, listening in the future, with understanding the root of what creates our balance and in a lack of balance and lack of harmony and guidance on what can be done about it in the most easiest applicable way. Thank you. Hey, you. For those that are new, this is uh, information that I am flowing out. I am being a vessel through which this information comes. Hey, you. Hey, you. Hey, you. this particular subject matter very often stumps people because no matter how hard they try they continue to be yanked one way or the other typically if you pay attention you the listener if you pay attention it is actually not so difficult to see those things that rile you up. It may be the abuse of an animal. It may be something political. It may be something that triggers a memory that you have failed to recognize, the triggering point. But in almost every case, if you actually stop to look you will discover that there is a foundation or a precursor that has led to the lack of harmony and balance. Most of the time, humans respond and react without thinking, without consideration of how their reaction or response might affect not only others, but themselves. Many people have significant ego because of the amount of lack of self-love, they find the need to express quite loudly and clearly their reaction to a condition. The larger the reaction, the larger the ego. The smaller the reaction, the smaller the ego. The person that constantly finds themselves unable to maintain calm and balance is in essence operating out of their mind and not their heart. The heart, you see, is the vessel through which all external information could and should be observed, heard, felt, and recognized through. For an open heart is a compassionate heart. Those who react and respond judgmentally, critically, angrily, or in other ways that are not representative of compassion, are obviously lacking it. A compassionate heart is one that does not instantly jump to judgment or criticism, is one that recognizes that those things happening around them, regardless of the label, regardless of the condition, regardless of the people involved, 
can be addressed in a way that does not add to the discord it is often the adding to the discord by those that are striving to maintain harmony that additional disharmony occurs for one carries an unpleasant energy and then when you align yourself to that same unpleasant energy you create a reverberating effect that adds more to the whole of what you are not wanting. When you receive a disharmonic experience, regardless of the thought, the word, the action, the people, regardless of the source, when you experience a disharm disharmonic experience with a open heart of compassion, it is quelled it is absorbed and the frequency is changed therefore the outcome that was the trajectory of the disharmonious thought word or action would not occur if we use for example children that become louder and louder and blaming and poking and pushing and louder and so forth. It is the harmonious, compassionate heart that listens to both, honors both, and teaches the children the value of gentle communication and respect. If one responds in the same frequency as the chaos around them, they are adding more to the power, X times two, so to speak. So the question is, how then does one maintain balance and harmony? The answer is to establish a practice of balancing and opening your heart. There are many such practices in the soul wisdom teachings. There are many watching today that do not practice this nearly enough. Meditation works great. But when you bring your relaxed self into an aggressive field of energy, do you maintain the consciousness of that meditation, do you bring the divine's pure and unconditional forgiveness and love into those moments where friction and disharmonic frequencies are occurring? The answer, of course, is no. So in working towards balancing and harmonizing yourself I recognize this wisdom it has been my honor to deliver this insight to each of you on this day ha 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 thank you thank you thank you I don't know who it was actually that was delivering that message I didn't hear um, the the uh, the voice who it was so I, I like to know who it is but that time I couldn't tell it was a female I know that but it was it was balanced with male energies so. uh, welcome also to Melissa Rose welcome Carol Whitney and welcome Seema AJ welcome Lisa Carter and Patrick Aberdeen welcome Sharon Saxby welcome Kathleen Monahan as well Cheryl Welcome, Cheryl. Welcome, Stephen Smith. Dalma Montez. Welcome, Sheila St. Pierre. Hope I didn't miss anybody. Thank you for joining today. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, insight from that flow. I may have bitten off more than I can chew in terms of doing a... <clears throat> I can think of a practice. That's easy. But I wanted to kind of drill down a bit. I wanted to, to use a real-life example. I think we'll just stick with one. Maybe just do anger. 
See if we can drill down on that a bit uh, to find what some of the sources of that is. Because based on the, the wisdom that was shared earlier, when we have an anger condition, there it is there externally because of a repressed anger internally. So the question becomes, where did we repress that? What's the condition upon what we witness? Sometimes, you know, we're abused by uh, a male in just male-female world, um, and it reminds us of being abused by a male in our, in our lifetime, but we repressed it, okay? So then when it happens, well, how do we react? Do we hold it within, and do we say something self-negative to ourself, or do we lash out at others? See? We all have different patterns of responding, but the wisdom is that all we need to do is pay attention to it, see it, and instead of continuing down that pattern, because if we keep going down that rah, 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 yelling road, that's ego, okay? We just want to be louder than the others because we want it to stop. But if we truly want harmony, if we truly want balance, we must stop and see it and go within and question it. What was the originator of this, okay? So I want you to do this individually. I'm going to walk you through some backward steps. So let us go ahead and try this. I've done this for myself, so I know I know how to do the backward steps. But your anger is different than mine. So I want you all, first of all, to think of the last thing that you were pretty angry about. Okay, whatever the last thing was, think about it. I've got mine. So think about yours. <clears throat> We're going to connect to that because everything has a soul. And, the, and in Master Shah's wisdom, every, every soul has a purpose, and its purpose is to serve. Every thought is a soul. Every word is a soul. Every paragraph, every expression, everything carries the source energy and matter. Everything has a purpose, has a consciousness. So that condition of anger has a soul. And it's trying to serve us. How can it serve us if we keep ignoring it? Okay? So we're going to connect to that soul. And we're going to ask it to serve us. So let's place our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. Drop our left hand in front of our heart center. Close your eyes. And let us connect to the last time we, we got angry. So dear the soul of the last time I got angry. The soul of the entire experience, the soul of what led up to it, <clears throat> and my actual reaction. Could you please come present to the forefront of my mind? Thank you. I love you. You were talking to the soul of this anger. I love you. I deeply appreciate your service. You are giving me an opportunity to learn from you to understand what triggered you. Thank you for your service, okay? Now notice I did not invite the souls of those individuals or conditions that you want to blame for the anger. Why did I not invite them? Because they're not the ones causing it. It's always something internal <clears throat> because it's their reaction. So let's work with that. So repeat, dear the soul, of this anger, please help me see uh, the conditions that caused me to react. So your first thought is going to be, they did this, she did that, he did this, I witnessed that, they took advantage of me here, okay, whatever it was. <clears throat> that's going to be your first thought. So isolate that first thought first, you know, the, the they, the, 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 naturally we're going to point outside. Okay, so find that first. Next step is, what was happening inside of me that was feeling really, really irritated? I want you to isolate the feeling. I was feeling hurt. I was feeling irritated. What were you feeling when this event occurred? I want you to isolate the feeling. Anger is a feeling, yes, but I want you to go more. Why were you feeling angry? You must go deeper. Level down. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, other possible feelings. I was feeling um, rejected. I was, I don't, I'm just guessing for you. 
Okay, I was feeling um, lonely. I was feeling upset. I was feeling dejected. Um, I was feeling uh, 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 abandoned. I was feeling, you just look for different feelings. When you say, I, I was feeling like they did this, feeling like is not a feeling. That's when you're pointing fingers at people and you're saying, you did this to me. So watch yourself. I was feeling like is not correct. Go to what you personally were feeling on an emotional level. Okay. I was feeling sad. I was feeling uh, angry. Why were you feeling angry? What was it that you were expecting? Well, I was expecting this and this and that. I was hoping for this and this and that. This is going the next level. Okay. Why was it that you were angry? Why was it that you were fearful? Why was it that you were uh, worried or concerned? Sometimes we get angry at our kids because we're worried and concerned, but we just lash out in anger. Go deeper. What was it that you were feeling? <clears throat> Why were you feeling that? Why were you feeling fearful? Because you love your child. You were fearful that they would run into the street, so you yelled at them. That's an example. Okay, go deeper on the fear, go deeper on the anxiety, go deeper on the root of that anger. Ask that better question. What was it that was creating the fear? Now you're getting to what you were needing. What was it that you were needing? Because the need created the original emotional condition that eventually led to that anger. <clears throat> what is it that you were needing? Were you needing? To, to feel um, what? I was needing to feel like I had made the best choice. And I was angry at myself for not making the best choice. I was needing to feel like I, had, I uh, had done everything I could. I was upset because I did everything I could to make sure that didn't happen. And I was needing to, uh, to believe that I did everything right. And it must be somebody else's fault. Back it up, okay? Go past the anger. Go to the next level of that emotion. Go to a layer below that emotion if you can. Go to what you are needing, right? <clears throat> now, when you define what you're needing, where did that come from? You'll find that very often it's a need related to self-protection, something about self, self-protection, self-righteousness, the need to be right. Uh, the need to uh, ensure a certain set of circumstances occur, okay? The need to protect, whatever it might be. Drill down on that. Yeah, a uh, big one for me is frustration as well, Kristen. So when we drill down on it, okay, now we know that that's a pattern. Constant for me, frustration, Chris, uh, Kristen says frustration. You will discover that there is very often a constant pattern of that need, okay? If you realize, if you start paying attention, that need is a constant pattern. That need for what? What causes that frustration? For me, <clears throat> it's my agenda to have things done in a timely manner, and they're not. I do everything just right so that everyone understands everything, and when they don't, I am frustrated. Why? Because I had an attachment to the outcome. I had an attachment to my time being honored and respected. So it's all about me, isn't it? None of this is honoring and respectful. My heart is not open. Check where your heart is when you drill down on this. Where is your heart in this? Is it an open and compassionate heart where you wanted that right thing for, for that condition where you lashed out in anger? Or is it a selfish blockage? Okay, in my case, in this example of frustration, it was a selfish blockage. <clears throat> we must recognize we are the source. We are the source of our lack of harmony and imbalance. When we react, we have to drill back on it. What caused this reaction? What was I hoping? What was I expecting? What was the emotion that I am not labeling correctly here? And then drill down on that emotion. Why was I feeling that emotion? What is it that I was needing? Drill down on that need. I'm needing this. Is that need selfish? 
or is it an open heart need, right? In the case of me, where it's selfish, how then do I open my heart? Because I'm needing to have things done in a timely manner so that my time is honored, blah, blah. But an open heart would say, ah, this person did not recognize that this was a need for me. I need to be more conscientious and express with them when I'm talking that as I deliver this information, I'm doing this so that you fully understand it so that when we get to the point of doing this actually in a timely manner that it gets done because that's where my attachment is so at this time before we ever get there can we make sure you understand everything and ask more questions in other words I can deal with it up front and ensure that we're all on the same page taking responsibility I can have an open heart and recognize that they are um, not on the same page and be compassionate I can let go of my attachment to having things done in a timely manner. You have to go through this process with yourself. Since I don't know what you're thinking, I cannot give very good representative examples. I'll try one. Let's say it's fear. I was feeling fear. Okay. Well, what's the fear about? If, if it's a fear of being rejected, is it a fear of being discovered? Is it a fear of being judged or criticized? Uh, and so you lash out in anger. Is it a fear of somebody um, uh, uh, doing something and you don't want them to do it because you're fearful that they might be hurt okay what is the source of that fear then you drill down on that what are you needing I need to be validated I need to be approved I need to be accepted I mean to not be challenged okay great if you're needing to not be approved accepted and challenged these are ego things where did that come from what is the root of that the need to be approved accepted and challenged the root is a lack of self-love. Okay, I need to open my heart. I need to approve of myself. I don't need outside approval. I don't need outside validation. But because you have never drilled down to that point, how can you actually go there and recognize that that lack right there, that lack of love, that lack of self-respect, led to an ego response when somebody didn't validate you when somebody judged you or criticized you and maybe you were fear fearful about being discovered and therefore you lashed out in anger you see how it has three or four layers now I want to see your sharing those who are willing to share I want to see what your learning process was in this because if you can speak it out if you can write it out first of all there's no ego in doing that if you put it on paper here for everyone to see what does that do for your ego it squashes it it says my heart is open I don't care what other people think secondly it teaches you how to drill down on your own because in the drilling down you are removing that very deep root blockage that caused you to lash out that caused you to react or respond thereby moving you out of harmony and balance when you go to that feeling and drill backwards on a deeper feeling not just there's something below anger trust me there's always something below anger and go down on that what is that and then go down on what are you needing and then discover why did I react that way once you get to that root you can uproot it with love and forgiveness and you can open your heart and I promise you that if you are consistent with something like this you allow, you automatically create the conditions in which you're able to maintain harmony and balance things could be happening all around you that would have triggered you but you're no longer triggered by them because your heart is open and compassionate because you removed those weeds that you never looked at so I want to read some of your responses <clears throat> Uh, Yolanda I was defense driving defensively enough so that when a driver cut across three lanes in front of her it caused fear and she got angry about their driving great what were you fearful of fearful of possibly losing your life other people um, fearful of what what were you needing you need to feel safe you need to feel uh, uh, comfortable that you have some form of control and that and you were angry that you had no control over the other people Okay, and so, all right, why did you need to feel safe? Because you value your life. Okay, so how do we approach that compassionately? 
this is good for me too because I'm, I, you know, stupid driver. I always have these unpleasant comments. You know, I, I built so much karma this way. I need to go, uh, and, and everybody like this, dear the soul of this other driver, I bless you with the greatest love to be more aware and awake so that everybody on the road has no fear and can comfortably get to where they're going without the fear of losing their life. I need to send them love. That's the solution, right? The hard part is doing it in that moment when we're caught off guard. But we can do it afterwards. We can go through our process of fear and anger and yelling and then go, oops. Okay, then we can go, dear the soul of this person who just made a, a move that caused me great fear. I recognize that uh, I didn't enjoy that. But I also want to send you love so that you don't do these kinds of things for others. And we send them love and forgiveness. Very important. And then that's an example. Now, that's the last example that was chosen for anger. We need to take that deeper. Same thing with the other emotions. If you walk around with a lot of fear in your life, what is the root of that fear? What is it that you're actually needing?